Hey, in this course I'm going to teach you all about Machina Jam, Native Instruments' newest control surface for Machina, which is both a great addition to a setup with other Machina hardware, as well as a powerful controller in its own right. In these tutorials I'm going to take you through every detail of the hardware, showing many different examples of how to make lots of styles of music with it. Although the lessons teach you how the software works as the course progresses, there's also a module that shows the software's main features right at the start of the course. So if you're brand new to Machina, then this will give you a good introduction to what the software is about. If you know a fair bit about Machina already though, you can always skip that module and go straight onto the Jam hardware. So whatever your current knowledge level, you'll be good to go. And finally, once the hardware is fully covered, there'll be some lessons that look at door usage, including some instruction on various ways of working with Machina inside Ableton Live. First though, let's begin with an overview of the hardware, so you can see just how much Jam can do. The hardware has two main sets of controls, which are both different from all other Machina controllers. At the top, you have the large 8x8 grid of 64 buttons, which offers various modes for music making, selected with the buttons to the left. In pad mode, we can see the 16 sounds in the currently selected group in the bottom right, and can hit buttons to play each sound, like on all other Machina hardware. Of course, patterns can be created by going into record mode, and then hitting the buttons whilst Machina plays, but you can also use the buttons to step sequence sounds. If I just mute the melodic sounds for a moment, then I can play just the beats. And with the snare selected now, going into step mode, the upper four rows can then be used to view and edit steps for the snare. But you can also use the entire grid to step edit up to eight sounds where each sound is then on its own row, and the buttons above select the different parts of the pattern. So if the very end of the pattern is looping now, I can program in some kind of fill. If I unmute the melodic sounds now, let's check out some of the other modes for the buttons. Selecting the bass sound on pad 16, we can then switch to keyboard mode, where the buttons can be pressed to play different MIDI notes. At the moment it's in chromatic mode, so it's all MIDI notes, but we can also switch it to different scales, to make it easier to play harmonies and melodies in a specific key. And you can see in the software how switching to keyboard mode then shows us all of the different notes in the pattern for the selected sound. So if I solo the sound now, we can hear what the bass is doing. And you can also switch the buttons to chord set mode, where they can then be used to play different chords in your selected key. And just like with drums, melodic sounds can also be step sequenced, as an alternative to playing in parts. And the final main mode for the buttons is song mode. In this mode, the buttons select patterns for each group, which live on the column above the group button. So all of the sounds right now are being made just with the first group, group A and you can see how the pattern changes when I press the different buttons here. To show you a quick example of how this can be useful, I've got a bongo kit in group B. So if I select that group and then switch to pad mode, you can hear the different bongo sounds in the kit. So now I can quickly record in a one bar bongo pattern. And now, back in song mode, you can see there's our pattern for group B, and it's now playing together with this pattern in group A. So if we wanted to create a new combination of patterns now, then I can just hit button 2 above to make a new scene, and then maybe add just the chords and bass pattern from group A, and then the bongo pattern in group B, and maybe have a third scene 
which only has a pattern from group A. And no bongos. And then I can switch from one scene to the next using the scene buttons, as you can see. Below the buttons is the other main set of controls, which is a bank of touch strips, which are totally unique to Jam and allow some really original ways to produce and perform. In level mode, they simply control the volume of sounds or groups, with the LEDs alongside providing handy metering for an extra visual reference. And the strips can also control AUX send levels. And macros and also any plug-in parameters, so both instruments and effects. And all these movements can be automated using the Auto button. With Jam, there came a new effect device though, which can be used to process groups, and that's the Performance FX plugin, which can be set to various modes, like delays and pitch shifters which can then be tweaked in dramatic ways using the touch strips in perform mode. And finally, the touch strips have a very unique notes mode, where they can be used to play multiple notes to create strummed or gliding melodies. With the buttons above defining what notes the strips play. So that was just a quick intro to what you can do with Jam. And that was with only one main group of sounds, which came from Niche Audio's Soulful Hip Hop Pack, which you can find on the Loopmasters website. On the course, I'll be working through all of those techniques slowly and clearly and in much greater detail. So don't worry if you couldn't follow along with too much of that. So if you're comfortable with the Machina software already, then you can go straight onto module three now. Or if you're brand new to Machina, I'll see you in the next module where I'll be giving an overview of the software to get you up to speed. See you then.